in the consolidated Outland Pavilion, they're gearing up to unveil Silas's all-new Nomad, a ship that couples a welcome dash of unconventional design with bare-bones, no-frills performance under the hood. I had the powers that be at Whitley's arrange some hands-on time with the ship ahead of its release so I could go on a good old-fashioned excursion. From my very first glimpses of its hull, I've been bit hard by the travel bug. As we prepared for our trip, Jimmy got intimately acquainted with the Nomad's 24 SCU capacity external cargo hold. Well done, Jimmy. Over there with the other ones. Out here, finally free of the shackles of civilization, edible food, and air traffic laws, we were able to really flex the Nomad's muscles. Watch this, Jimmy! Let's test out these triple shield silos we're going on about, eh? Oh, Even triple shields are no match for reckless flying. Remember that, kids. How's it looking there, Jim? After sharing a few campfire stories, Jimmy and I decided to turn in under the stars. What was that? Jimmy? Jimmy? The onboard bed provides that extra level of security someone of my stature is used to. And convenient access to the laser repeaters made me rest extra easy. As our expedition came to a close, I couldn't help but feel that I'd tasted true freedom. Which, coming from a person who gets pretty much everything he wants, is saying something. As I spooled up the quantum drive one last time, I knew I'd return to civilization a changed man and that I'd never needed a shower so badly in my entire life. Development on the Nomad began in 2942, two full years before the release of the Mustang, originally under the name Manta, multi-crew accessible new transport and being legged by Dr. Charlotte Rowland. The original vision of the Nomad was that of a competitor to the RSI Constellation spacecraft. By 2944, the plan was that Manta would be a large multi-crew ship built with off-shelf components and requiring only its small central cabin to have any real construction take place. Additionally, coming in at a cool 750,000 UEC, the Kerner's vision of low-cost competitor was in sight. One significant cost-saving measure was an exposed cargo bay, akin to industrial haulers rather than a more constantly contained cargo hold. However, shortly after the launch of the Mustang, Kerner would become more involved with the development process. His first change, the name favouring that of the Nomad, giving those interested in the ship the idea that they were able to strike out on their own. Soon after Kerner's increase in interest in the ship, he would introduce more changes, opting for a single-seat transporter over a multi-crew ship. This and other changes led to the resignation of Dr. Rowland, which caused significant delays in the project coming to fruition. One of the few surviving features of the shift from Manta to the Nomad was that of the exterior cargo hold. By the time two Nomad prototype was completed, its cost was closer to that of a million credits still a significant amount below that of a constellation. One of the largest reasons for the price increase was due to the hover technology needed to be developed to sustain the exterior cargo hull. Quote, when we introduced the Mustang line back in 2944, our aim was to reshape the dream of spaceflight. Since then, much has changed in the way we traverse the stars. The universe itself has expanded with infinite opportunities waiting out there for all of us brave enough to chase them. The time has come to reshape, reshape the dream yet again, to push further than we ever have before. The time has come for the Nomad." End quote. Silas Kerner, 2950. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today, obviously, we're going to take a look at this great little starter ship, the Nomad. Manufactured by Consolidated Outland, it is the space pickup truck and is 
fairly versatile for its size. There's a great bond between Grey Cat Rock Mining and the Nomad, and I use the Nomad way more than some of my other ships. Um, I just find it a pleasant ship to fly. Once you get used to its odd looks, it's extremely versatile, very useful, and the Grey Cat Rock Mining aspect um, is brilliant. It's a very good game loop that I thoroughly enjoy, and I use the Nomad a lot to uh, exploit that game loop and make some good money. So it is a very interesting ship. It does have some very cool features. Uh, it has Xi'an Alien Hover Tech for landing gear, so it uses sorcery to hover above the ground, which is awesome. Obviously, the flatbed at the back is very unique. It's an external cargo bay. Um, there's only a few ships with that capability, mainly the hull um, a, B, C, D and E's um, have that capability. So to have these cool features on a starter ship is very good. It has a bed, it has a very nice interior. Um, very pleasant inside the Nomad. Handles really nicely and it has some advantages over say uh, the Cutlass Black, i.e. if you get hit and lose an engine in the Cutlass Black or any of the Cutlasses to be fair, you're no longer flying that spacecraft. So that doesn't happen with this. It's very cool. Once you get used to the sort of weird aesthetics of it, it has a very bulbous cockpit that kind of reminds me of World War II bombers from Germany in some respects. And towards the rear of the ship itself, it's all spiky and angular and yeah, spoilerish. It's really cool. Very good ship. I would recommend this to anyone that's trying to get into the verse or maybe you haven't tried this ship, you definitely should. Internally, cockpit wise it is without a doubt one of my favorite places to sit there's something although there are struts that you might find are quite intrusive um, the layout of the mfds the way that they just wrap around you as the pilot i think is one of the better designs in the game personally i really enjoy um, how the mfds wrap around the pilot everything is super easy to read and even the color scheme is a nice um, ambient glow to it which makes reading the MFDs very easy. The struts are nowhere near as impending that you might think. Um, it's just a very pleasant place to sit in the Nomad piloting this ship. It's a fantastic, fantastic ship and I do feel it's kind of underrated and I wonder if that's just because people want to do combat more. Although the ship has three weapon systems on board, you can upgrade them to a bigger size which is almost certainly going to increase, increase your DPS output. Um, I've never really used this ship for bounty hunting or anything like that. I really just like the sort of relaxing side to Star Citizen sometimes, and that's when uh, the Grey Cat Rock gets the dust blown off of it. And they're, they're best friends. The Nomad and the Grey Cats are definitely best friends, and it can also fit multiple different vehicles. STV, Grey Cat Rock DS, the bigger variant, with some careful parking. So it's a, an impressive ship. Now let's take a look at the stock components that you will find when you purchase the Nomad for the first time. Okay guys, here we are at the DPS calculator live and we have the Nomad and as you can see we have three weapon systems here. Stock, they are the badges and all three of them are gimbaled so we have the one on the chin of the ship itself and then we have a mini turret on the spine of the ship at the top. Each one of these is sporting badges. You can of course swap these out for a larger weapon system, maybe three fixed size threes. I have never felt the need to change them. I like the badges, I like the gimbals, I think they're a little bit uh, more useful because this ship isn't particularly maneuverable in terms of things like a Arrow or a Gladius or things of that nature and nor should it be as it is a space pickup truck. You get eight missiles as well which are the Strike Force 2s and we get four in each side of um, sort of like winglets, not winglets, the little pods on the side of the ship. We get three shields, which is an interesting layout. They're size one and they are of the web variety. And they have a really cool storage place for these on the ship as well. Then we have one power plant, which is size one, which is the power bolt. Again, I've really never really needed to change any components. It's like a my chilling mini cargo running expedition right, mining ship basically. Two Arctic Storms, size 1 coolers and a Quantum Drive which is the expedition. Um, haven't used it far enough 
don't really go long distances with the Nomad to recommend any QT drivers, but there is definitely performance on the table that you can gain by swapping components to your needs, that's for sure. Let's then move on to the internals of the ship. Okay guys, here we are in the living quarters of the Nomad and it's very clean, very simple and in simpleness there is aspects of elegance I find and I really like this living quarters for this ship. I think it's for a solo player, for a new player, it's cosy, it's functional, it's not too depressing. Um, I kind of like it, there's something that it has charm to some respect. So you can see that you get a kitchenette. Uh, a, a microwave, uh, like a mini breakfast bar, which is <laughs> pretty cool. I think that's even marble as well. So you do get a little bit of fancy um, with the Nomad. And the sleeping quarters as well, fairly spacious. Um, little house plant, because reasons, you know. Um, so, although it's simple, it's elegant, you know. I really like the the internals of the Nomad. There's lots and lots of right angles and sort of aggressive um, angles running through the ship and that transforms into the internals as well and it's uh, quite a pleasant place to sit. At the back end of that we have a storage bin on the left to some respect but there's going to be um, components. You have a viewport so you can see out to your cargo deck and you have the main entry point to the ship with a ladder that folds in and out in a very posh fan um, posh manner excuse me so yeah it's a great little ship I really like the Nomad very humble very versatile nice to fly pleasant place to be in the middle of nowhere you have the option to log out by laying in the bed so it's very simple elegant and functional and I like it I really do it's grown on me the more I use it the more I like it okay let's go over some of the features to be found in and around the Nomad before we begin our tour of the ship. So cargo space, it has 24 SCU at the back on that cargo bed and it can fit a Cyclone, Grey Cat Rock as we've mentioned, the STV, the PTV and the Grey Cat Rock DS but requires some talented par parking. Excuse me. Habitation. For a light freighter, the Nomad has surprisingly spacious living quarters with a bed, kitchen, bathroom, gun racks and plenty, plenty of local inventory. Hover tech. The Nomad has unique levitating landing emitters that make the ship hover above the surface instead of physically touching land. So, as I said, sorcery. Weapons with a single size 3 gun hardpoint at the front of the ship, a pilot controlled remote turret which can hold a pair of size 2 guns on top, and racks that can hold up to 8 size 2 missiles, the Nomad can defend itself if needed. Missiles cannot swap to different types, however. And another important feature of this ship, and it should be on the horizon very soon, tractor beam. The vehicle has a standard equipped tractor beam on a size 1 utility mount, allowing you to easily transfer Congo, uh, Congo cargo on or off its hold. That's going to be a very excellent feature for most ships, but especially for the Nomad. I look forward to using that. So as you can see, it has some impressive features and uh, packed into a tiny frame. And... Um, yeah, it's a very impressive ship. So who is this ship for, really? Well, maybe, I think, it's for people that don't want to do combat 24-7. Not saying that you can't. And you want to do other things. It gives you the ability to, ability to do minor cargo running. You know, uh, Grey Cat Rock Mining is the big plus for me. I just can't get enough of it, to be quite honest with you. It's very versatile. It was brilliant in Jump Town. I used it in Jump Town. Very easy to yeet those drug packages onto the back, especially when you can see the cargo ramp is down like this. Um, yeah, it has a lot of versatility, a lot of comfort, and it's very easy to fly. Um, so it's more sort of geared towards the relaxation side of Star Citizen, I would say, for people that want to do other things other than combat. Um, you can kill the AI bounty, not a problem. You could go bunker busting in this, not a problem, of course you can. Um, but I think predominantly where this ship shines is the more relaxing side to Star Citizen that um, a lot of people enjoy for good reason. So it's very impressive. As you can see here, it just levitates like David Blaine. Um, yeah very interesting shapes and right angles the back is very super aggressive and then the front seems to be very bulbous and placid so it's a stark contrast to how the ship looks externally but um yeah the hover sorcery of the landing gear and the animation is really good and the detail of the struts inside as well 
it's all there that you would expect from CRG. Um, so no real shocks, it's all been modelled, it all works, the animation's great. Love that blue tint around the landing gear. Then we have the eight missiles, um, four on each side of the ship in total. Stored away some exhaust fans, and then the weird bulbous look at the front. Yeah, kind of menacing in some respects. Very sort of Batman-esque from certain camera angles, I find. But yeah, once you get used to the aesthetics and you fly this ship for a little bit of time, it really does get under your skin. I'm very impressed with it and have use it on the regular. I have to admit that I can't stop using this sometimes. Anyway, enough ranting. Let's get in the ship. There's only one entry point, so we'll go up and down the ladder to get in and out. But obviously, we're going to go in. There we go. And we're greeted by just red lots of red um now for those of you that have been in the prowler if not um i have a video on it i'll link it you i get sort of prowler vibes stood right here the internals of the prowler the dropship the alien dropship have the same sort of kind of tavaran red tints with the angles um but that quickly fades when you get inside you have this awesome access um panel port sorry you can see that your cargo is still there. The first time flying this, I was worried that my SCU or whatever I had on the back was just going to float off in the, into space, but it doesn't because there's a gravity pad there which keeps things locked down, which is nice. Mag grids, etc. Um, so we have a little storage bin there for just like electronic components, possibly blades? Question mark. I'm not entirely sure. We do have a toilet as well, um, which will be useful when they introduce that mechanic. Um, I don't know, hygiene. And for some reason, there is toothpaste and a toothbrush. Now, I don't know who's been living in this ship, but there's a perfectly good kitchen with a sink next door, so please don't brush your teeth using toilet water. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. Don't do that. Who does that? Freaking weirdo. Anyway, um, opposite that, we have a mini storage. Um, I'm not entirely sure it's an armor thing or a weapon rack so there's no sort of indication what this is for unless it's just for the small SCU boxes maybe maybe you could get a helmet in that top and then your armor folded into an SCU box on the bottom I'm not sure but it's storage is there for a reason um, haven't figured it out then we have the uh, the classic houseplant bringing a little bit of life into the interior and the bed some reading material, the lawmakers, lawmakers guide, clan brutality, and dare to dream. Dare to dream sounds like a good read. Um, and then we have like some fault finding books, error reported. Maybe they're uh, it's probably the issue council. It's bug reports. We don't have a monitor there. I don't like it being there though because if you're lying down, how are you going to watch that without breaking your neck? Never mind, it's trivial. At least it's there. Then we have this really cool little breakfast bar here. I'm going to call it a breakfast bar. But the seat that pops out. Look at that. Brilliant. That's the best thing in the ship. Forget the sorcery and the hovering. That's amazing. So you can take a little seat. Storage for the components in the roof. I like that. I think that's a really sensible design. Getting things in and out this way is just very efficient I think that's going to be an excellent side to the ship especially when it comes to repairs in the kitchen we have some you know space decorations we've got soy sauce nice kitchen cooker sink where I would be brushing my teeth not the toilet and the microwave but yeah that seat is awesome so that's the living quarters humble effective I like it and then we go through the door we arrive at the cockpit, we'll take a seat, nice 180, very smooth animation. It's good to see that the teleporting hasn't affected this ship where you get just yeeted into the front. So as you can see, there are a lot of struts and normally I would pick a bone with it and be like, ah, oh, it's too, it's too intrusive, but it's really not that bad at all and you soon forget. And I think just the way that the cockpit itself is laid out is quite bulbous from outside looking in but inside it starts to make sense 
we have this excellent MFD, all the buttons here that we could ever want. When these all get modelled and become functional, it's going to be amazing. So I just really like the colour scheme and how the cockpit wraps around the pilot. It's a big MFD, um, big head-ups display, big rectangular HUD, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, just a pleasant place to sit. So there we go, guys. That was my short video on the Consolidated Outland Nomad. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what buttons to press. And I, of course, will have more Star Citizen content en route to you soon. Take care. Cheers.